as if a teardrop I. Sitting by the river of the heart and listening to her song, I see in mind's eye a small circle of stones in which a combination of coal and wood, oxygen and heat, create fire, burning warm and bright. And then, lifting my mind's eye higher, I see, too, something that strikes me as somewhat comparable, namely a small stone cottage, once a tenant farmer's modest home, up on the slope of the hill, where surely another fire, similarly marked out, set apart and sheltered, is here named the Hearth, a temporary place of and home to the heart and the hearth, that is, on which a kettle again holds water boiling up for hot tea, and with it the promise of warmth and comfort, and possibly even some company. And these words, now swirling around in my imagination, are as if themselves rising up with the smoke and the steam of this great heat of thought burning up upon fire's scorched ground, and hearths scorched ground, and hearts scorched ground, and all life's energy in this way simply burning up the heart, my heart, life's heart, my heart, the heart. In such emotion, so much emotion, all emotion, as if life itself was simply evaporating, sublime, into thin air, seemingly, sometimes, except sometimes Occasionally also, if only some time later, lifted upwards again in heat of heart's memory to form and fall finally into thought and word, cool as rain from this single sky's mind upon the mountainside, in the mountain's shadows and lush green valleys, and sitting by the river of the heart and listening, only listening, this air glistening fresh upon my ear and in my eye, as if from heaven fallen, divine her song, and but a teardrop I. Or so I see it momentarily beneath this sky's Minds, I. And so, sitting by the river of the heart and listening to her song, I too take these my thoughts and words, wept, written out in inky poetry on rain smudged paper, and dropped them as if again and for a second time into the stream in which the heart's fast-flowing current may carry them back, perhaps, to their true source, I hope. Tears of the river, these words, and but a clumsy, inadequate, imperfect impression of poetry, longing imperfectly for poetry. And from where then there, at river's source, these words may some day be carried back and returned to me, called from heart's lifetime's flow of such emotion, so much emotion and all emotion. We call it love often, call it love so often, expansive, boundless, infinite, and so far beyond so far beyond this meagre talent, impoverished and self so small and limited, too often solitary and alone, and the why not understanding always, flowing through, flowing out, flowing back at last, at last, at last, and at last perhaps one day, at last, perfected.